Morning, everyone. Welcome to everyone for our uh, monthly webinar series. We're going to start in a couple of minutes. Um, so today we'll be talking about the third-party delivery systems and how actually restaurants can um, work in order to make these third-party uh, services work for them. Um, so we're going to actually briefly talk about that. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, ping us here in the chat, or you can also send us an email at uh, marketing at mconnect.com and we'll be more than happy to um, uh, answer those questions. All right, um, so just to give a brief background about uh, mconnect, we have actually started our company in 2015 um, as a restaurant marketing company with a focus on um, collecting customer data from different sources and so that we can build uh, how uh, build a better um, view of a customer in terms of preferences uh, what they like when they eat and all those kind of things and it in turn will uh, give us a better um, engage customer engagement model which we're going to talk in a few slides but um, and some of our clients include uh, Taco Sima, Dairy Queen, and other clients. And coming back to our agenda for this day, we're going to actually talk about uh, what are actually third-party delivery services, um, how do they compare when uh, any restaurant is trying to come up with um, uh, their own in-house delivery, and in terms of what do actually um, uh, restaurants actually have to do in order for uh, these companies to or for these third party delivery systems or or, or companies to work for them All right um, again given the fact that over the past couple of years we have seen um, a dramatic increase in terms of the third party deliveries uh, services uh, we thought that this would be an apt um, um, webinar topic and again, we will be getting into the specifics of the third one, which is basically the how we can actually make these uh, third-party services work for you, right? Um, in the initial slide, we were talking about the customer engagement model, and uh, we have at M Connect we follow what we call as an A to A awareness to advocacy customer engagement model, where we have broken down um, how customers engage with a restaurant uh, into five phases. Um, by the way, this model can be applied to any particular industry, but this is what we have actually have. Uh, this is our uh, proprietary A to A customer engagement model, where we said that. Uh, the customer starts with an awareness phase, um, then moves on to the engagement phase with the brand, and uh, followed by an acquisition in terms of buying from the brand. And if their service and experience is all good, they become loyal customers. And the ultimate goal is them to become brand ambassadors or advocates for the brand. So these are the different five stages. And um, at each stage, um, using our mConnect platform, we collect customer data and use this data in turn to uh, better market uh, and uh, position our uh, cl customer clients. All right. Having said that, um, in all our presentations, in all our um, 
um, uh, models. We actually look at any specific marketing strategy or anything that uh, we um, either execute or we look at in third parties doing. We compare that with this customer engagement model and try to see how exactly um, these um, uh, these engagement strategies or marketing strategies uh, um, compared with this A2A customer engagement model. And even in this case, also the third party delivery systems, we can actually talk about giving references to what uh, these do, as in what how these third party delivery systems play at all these five, uh, um, uh, five levels of these customer engagement uh, model, right? Um, so th this is the current state of uh, the food delivery systems. Um, this was actually started way back uh, when Grubhub started and even we actually had E24 hours and all these things. Um, they were kind of an aggregators, but over time they have moved not just for an food aggregators, but also more from a delivery point of view. And there are two things happening in the market. One is uh, your uh, demand in terms of the millennials and everyone basically saying that um, where um, they would rather want to um, order delivery, sit at home, and eat in the comforts of watching the binge watching in terms of Netflix or, or Amazon uh, Prime channels. And that in turn has led to this increased demand and have led to a plethora of national brands like uh, DoorDash, uh, Postmates, and all these things, and also local um, local uh, versions of these delivery companies, right? Um, and then, in turn, this led to a lot of um, restaurant chains and restaurant restaurateurs, individual mom and pop stores basically saying that, okay, I'm going to actually have to jump onto this bandwagon of uh, delivery systems um, in terms of like uh, signing up with multiple of them. And we have seen in n number of cases where it is on an average, a particular typical restaurant will actually have three to four, um, uh, three to four, uh, uh, delivery companies actually working for them um, the tablets and all those kind of things right um, but the demand is also there and in terms of uh, uh, by some estimates it is going to grow to 24 billion dollars by end of 2023 uh, but also we have seen off late there has been a churn in terms of amazon basically um, Dropping it, ha dropping its hat, saying that they're not going to actually um, no longer be in this business, even though they've actually invested around five hundred million dollars in uh, Deliveroo, which is a UK-based company. So, in 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 effect, we have seen an increase in terms of. Uh, the number of players and also a churn in terms of consolidations, acquisitions, and all those kind of things actually happening. Um, and we're going to talk in a little bit about the, the, the in, again in, the, in terms of the food delivery itself. If you look at it, all these companies they charge uh, between twenty-five to forty percent, depending upon the kind of contracts they have. And obviously, these percentages are typical for a mom and pop restaurants. But if you are actually a national brand or if you have a lot of restaurants, uh, the percentages which these companies actually charge um, are very much uh, lower when compared with the mom and pop uh, store. And the problem with the food delivery is. And end of the day, it's 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 there's nothing strategic or there's nothing from a from a food delivery point of view. There's nothing strategic or anything that is actually happening. Um, it is all about numbers game in terms of uh, trying to get to as many restaurants as possible, trying to get as many, um, um, and trying to get to as many as um, restaurants, and also in terms of the the end customers as well. And uh, it's been, uh, even though they charge 25, 30%, some of the companies are actually losing money because they themselves put in more money from their pockets just to uh, sustain in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of ability to attract new customers and ability to keep them happy and all those kind of things. And given that, um, for example, if I go to Uber Eats vis-a-vis, -vis, if I go to Grubhub, I'm going to get 
the same deal in terms of like my um, my cheese pizza would basically there's no differentiation in terms of these two companies and and again it's it's that's what is actually kind of putting pressure on these companies and also there is a pressure coming from the restaurant you're saying that hey you're going to charge like 25 30 40 percent for me as a restaurant which would not basically work for me and that we have seen again this is the, the the current state is obviously we are seeing a growth in terms of the number of um, um companies or number of restaurants which are actually joining on the bandwagon at the same time there is a consolidation which is happening within the industry because of a lot of uh, flux um and and also obviously given that this is an economies of scale and smaller companies are unable to sustain and we have seen a lot of acquisitions closures and all those kind of things um happening and and we will be seeing a lot of churn in on in, in this industry over the next uh, couple of uh, years to start with um all right um having said that um right now the very first question that one actually has to look at is whether um, this one whether um, delivery is 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 if it makes sense for you as a restaurant owner and we have seen a lot many times in terms of um, 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 some people are getting onto the bandwagon because it's a mob mentality kind of a thing. Um, and But you as a restaurant owner actually have to think whether, um, whether if it makes sense for you from both two, uh, from two, uh, from two uh, angles or from two perspectives. One is for you as a cuisine, um, for you as a cuisine, whether it makes sense. Second thing is for you as a customer, as as an end customer. If if your end customers are um, you are targeting seniors or or people who want to come to the restaurant and actually have um, a dining experience, then it does not make for a sense for you to kind of like go for delivery services, uh, because that would actually dilute the brand. And second thing is also from a food perspective. Not every food, basically, you cannot um, basically obviously the, the the presentation makes a difference, the ambience makes a difference, and all those kind of things. And that's what we always tell our clients, saying that hey, if if delivery makes sense for you go for it and if if it from your customer's perspective and from your food perspective if not it, it, it does not make any sense for example these are the ones which actually has said that hey i'm not gonna actually go with uh, like for example a steak and all those kind of things they're saying um texas roadhouse so they have actually said that they're not gonna actually go with uh, the delivery because their cuisine does not deliver well right now once you made a determination in terms of um, of uh, whether delivery makes sense for you, the second question would basically be whether you want to go with in-house delivery or whether you want to go with third-party services or a combination of both. Right um, at that point of time, you you actually have to have again. It means if you are going for an in-house delivery, that means you need to actually have a dedicated delivery staff, and it's not that you're gonna actually have a lot of. If 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 you are only a delivery only kind of a restaurant, then that's a separate thing. But you actually have a dining place, and some people might actually order two orders or three orders per day kind of a thing, and that means you either actually have to have a dedicated person or someone who can come and on demand come and pick up the uh, pick up the uh, the food and deliver it again make sure that it 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 it, it is basically a logistical uh, issue in terms of having a dedicated staff and the insurance and all those kind of things which adds actually adds cost but there are also positive things in terms of having because you own um, you can set timings and all those kind of things right but um, so in the sense like we have actually seen these are some of the national level players who have actually invested their own uh, delivery staff and they basically said that if people want to deliver they actually have to deliver through their own their own um, this one rather than in uh, investing on third party components again 
it's an investment which you need to make and you need to see whether it would make sense from a cost benefit perspective in the sense that if you're investing like a um, 10k in terms of having a dedicated staff and all those kind of things uh, would it make sense for you whether you would actually get back in terms of this investment not immediately but maybe over a long run in terms of additional revenues in terms of um, uh, customer loyalty in terms of uh, customer data and all those kind of things which we're going to talk in a little while right um, again just bear in mind that most of the people who are actually ordering they would like to order from the restaurant directly and again, these are the numbers um, but obviously there's all, always a shift in terms of the convenience wise if someone is trying to like most of these millennials they said okay i'm actually in a mood for uh, a chinese and then they basically op rather than trying to go to google they might actually go to um, grubhub or doordash and try to see which are the nearby chinese restaurants and order from there as well but there are also other people who would directly say oh, i'm actually in a in a, in a mode for Chinese, I know this neighborhood restaurant called Ming's or something like that. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, order from that particular restaurant as well. So it's a combination of both. Um, and then these are the ones, right? Like for you, you again, you have to, as I was telling in between before, you have to have two things, like in the sense that whether it would make sense for you to go for, um, for you to, um, go for a dedicated uh, um, in-store delivery or even if you have a mix of both you need to actually have what are the pros for that one in the sense that you can um, you can control in terms of uh, the data part you can actually increase the brand loyalty because you can control in terms of how long it will take for you to deliver uh, the presentation and all those kind of things and at the same time People, when they actually are coming to your store, that means they are more engaged with you as a brand and you can send them messages and all those kind of things. Um, those, are the, those are the pros in terms of having your own, um, your own delivery system. Whereas in terms of the, the issues which you would actually have are the costs, the cost and logistics wise, in the sense the cost is basically coming from a, a dedicated person being there for you to deliver and also logistics wise in terms of again given the demand is you might be getting one or two orders a day and maybe one in the morning one in the evening would it make sense for you to kind of actually have uh, um, uh, 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 a person just to order one one order a day kind of a thing and then and then obviously the person will basically become uh, if they are earning only based on the tips, they might not be there as well, and they would rather want to have. Um, 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 they can actually have um, something in the sense that they would might come in a day, or they would actually say, "I'm not coming," and all those kind of things, right? Um, so now that you made a determination in terms of having in-house versus third-party delivery systems and given the fact that these are these third-party delivery systems are ubiquitous they are everywhere um, you might want to actually go with third-party delivery services system and then start trying to see how you can actually engage them and in terms of how you can actually make them work for you and what we have actually seen is in terms of the third party delivery systems itself when we talk about the a to a model the awareness to um, advocacy model right we have seen that um, these third party delivery systems they create a lot of awareness for their own um, like for example uber eats will actually advertise come and and, uh, and find your best Italian restaurant on Uber Eats rather than saying come and um, taste the best pizza in town at New York uh, Pizzeria or something like that, right? So from an awareness point of view, obviously having your store listed um, in, in on these third-party delivery systems, definitely it will create awareness in terms of, um, yes, you, your store is actually listed there um then um, in terms of the engagement wise itself they're not going to actually engage with the with the brand directly but they are actually going to engage with the uh, 
uh, with 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 the third party services itself again in the sense again from an engagement point of view when we say engagement we are talking about um, um, engaging with new york pizza area vis a vis uber eats right and then in terms of the acquisition itself <clears throat> excuse me in terms of the acquisition itself you are not actually acquiring the customer when we say acquiring the customer it's only a transaction based you are only uh, acquiring a transaction rather than a customer because the customer belongs and when we say customer belongs to uber eats or 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 uh, grubhub it means these people actually have access to their customer data so that they can actually if in case you would say that i'm no longer be interested in uh, listing on third party services it's not that a person xyz would data will come to you right and that's the, the acquisition wise you are only doing a transactional um, transaction with the customer and that's pretty much it and in terms of the fourth phase which is basically the loyalty again given the fact that you do not actually own customer data you cannot actually start developing the customer relationship there's no actually have any kind of uh, a loyalty with you as a brand and obviously uber eats would likely say refer your friends to uber eats and get 10 dollars off that means the advocacy is happening only at the third party level not with your brand so uh if you look from an a to a model perspective the third party delivery services are a good mechanism for you to uh, increase the awareness but the following stages in terms of engaging with the brand, engaging with the customer with uh, reference to your brand engaging and then turning them into your customers in terms of getting their data and turning them into your loyal customers and then referring their a uh, social circle to your brand it will not happen uh with if you just basically uh look at the third party delivery services so in the next few slides we're going to actually talk in terms of how you as a restaurant owner can increase the brand as an as an as an can increase the awareness and obviously we have seen off late these companies actually have started reaching out to these people and said that we will actually create uh, other uh, uh, like uh, uh, we will actually create a restaurant um, as like we will start increasing the awareness and all those kind of things and then we going to actually talk about how you as a as a restaurant owner can increase the brand uh, i mean to say like um, increase the engagement and all those kind of things in the next few slides right um, again as we were saying that when you tie up with these companies they actually own the customer they do process the order they understand the customer well they know what they are placing when they are placing and all those kind of things and the only information you might get is basically the customer phone number that's pretty much it just to make a phone call and all those kind of things right um but also um if you look at it in terms of the reach wise as well they we actually have seen lot many uh, national chains are actually jumping on like for example starbucks mcdonald subway wendy's and all these people actually have started uh, um um delivering through doordash uber eats and all those kind of things and obviously as we were saying right like in terms of um for me as an end customer these would actually there are benefits because if i'm actually in a mood for chinese i'm going to actually go um go to ubereats.com and and look for all the chinese restaurants or any restaurant which are closer by um and and then kind of like um, and and an order right and also for you as a restaurant owner we have actually seen again this is all um based on our initial analysis where we have actually seen that most of the restaurant owners they actually say that they have actually increased um their sales but we have also have seen that uh, um their dine in sales have actually have decreased um in terms of because more customers are basically going for delivery services than going to the restaurant owner so they are kind of compensating in terms of the the the, the share of these delivery um orders have increased whereas the dine in have decreased 
And at the same time, definitely these third-party systems basically are a good uh, uh, sources for uh, marketing and advertising, as I was saying, in terms of they if they actually are seeing that one particular restaurant is actually doing good, they would rather want us, they would rather want them to basically go ahead and uh, um, order, uh, as in like they would rather want to promote that particular restaurant because it's a good business for them too. Right, um, and again, Wendy's have actually have said that their order sizes have actually increased because of the delivery, and it's a fact that it's not just for the third party delivery as well. It's a fact that even for in house delivery as well, most of the times people do end up ordering more than what is required because um, when they are actually ordering, they are very hungry or they do not know how much of a quantity they're gonna get. Um, so they typically end up um, ordering more than, and also there's an ability for you to kind of uh, push, um, saying that if you want to order, again, something similar to what um, other restaurants actually, you can kind of like cross sell and upsell and all those kind of things, right? Um, again, we have been seeing that the number of, uh, the number of uh, this one's uh, restaurants which are jo joining the brand actually have uh, increased, right? Um, so the, the, again, from a negative sense in terms of this one, we've been talking about um, how customers do not actually have access in terms of the customer services. We have seen times that specifically with regards to either DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber Eats, most of them actually have said that um, this used to happen, but I'm not sure, uh, especially with Grubhub, where people have actually said that they will come and pick up the order in 30 minutes, but they wouldn't, they actually, um, by the time they actually reached, it was more than like 45 minutes and the food was getting cold and it was actually kind of, uh, um, 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 and, 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 and the customers were unhappy, even though they have actually placed an order on Grubhub, they have actually placed an order with New York Pigs area and when they are not getting, they actually turn their uh, dissatisfaction towards New York Pigs area saying that they haven't delivered on time and all those kind of things. Right, um, so that is what is actually happening on on some of these things, and also given the fact that you do not actually have customer data, that means you are not able to develop the relationships and all those kind of things. Um, so that is actually impacting the customers in terms of uh, um, managing the journey, managing the conversations, and all those kind of things. So the few things that you can actually do in order to in order for you to um, overcome these is we are always advised our clients or uh, to say that whenever they are delivering, uh, put some kind of a coupon on or some kind of a messaging on those boxes saying that hey um, so that these people who are actually getting they have an incentive um, to uh, order from you next time so basically say that five dollars off when you order on um, on on um, newyorkpizzeria.com or mypizzeria.com right and at the same time put some messages in terms of saying that, hey, um, go to uh, facebook.com slash mypizzeria for feedback. You can always request feedback or uh, ask these customers again. It's not that if you send out 10 orders, even if you get one customer back into your, um, into your door, uh, ordering them or getting feedback and all those kind of things, uh, that would actually add a whole lot of, uh, um, that would actually add a whole lot of uh, um, info uh, that would actually add a whole lot of in terms of like a, um, you can start having these conversations with these customers and all those kind of things in terms of getting their data and all this that would actually in, in a way offset the negatives in terms of the third party uh, delivery system right um, again as we have said that most of the times we have seen is given that it is numbers game when people actually order they might actually have one delivery driver um, they would actually have said 25 minutes to come and pick up the order but in the meantime um, these third party component third party service delivery people would actually get more deliveries and they actually have to manage this with this one person again 
end of the day it's a logistical game it is basically a numbers game um so the third party delivery uh, service companies also have to make money so they would actually have uh, uh they would actually have only one or two people uh, trying to deliver all these food again this has actually happened in peak demands on a friday evening or a saturday evening uh, wherein it would actually impact you as a customer um, so whenever you need to make sure if possible whenever they are placing an order and all those kind of things you need to actually place make sure that um, these are delivered by even though you say this information but it's always better to say that um, or if possible on the sites or or maybe whenever you're um, as part of the communication in the in the boxes and all those kind of things saying that hey this is delivered by third party companies um let us know if you have any questions or anything like that right and at the same time given that you do not actually manage these third party um, delivery companies and and the staff members and all those kind of things they might not behave the way you want them to behave um, and all those kind of things so this kind of impacts your the, the, the customer experience which they actually have um, as a brand and you need to kind of minimize that as much as possible obviously by working with the third party delivery if there are any complaints that you can actually get or you try to uh, proactively seek feedback from these customers if possible by again as i said by having a feedback card or by asking them to go to uh, mypizzeria.com slash feedback and all those kind of things right um again if you look at it the average time right now is 49 minutes like based on the bcg's um, uh, survey but with time this would actually increase because as more and more number of people are actually ordering and more number of restaurants coming on board and you would actually have a certain set of pools so that means again as we were t talking about early in the presentation that there's going to actually have a churn in terms of uh, uh right so that's what it's going to actually happen so um it actually Im impacts it, it would actually impact uh, um uh, a third party deliveries basically having issues in terms of um uh, more um in in future we actually we actually see an issue in terms of uh, a lot of um, companies uh, uh, having issues with, with the third party and, and and then obviously as a restaurant owner you actually have to proactively work with them and also try to get feedback as much as possible trying to see if you can minimize these disruptions right and the other thing is also that we have actually have seen the decrease in terms of the profits wise um, in terms of um, uh, the higher percentages they actually have uh, and also in terms of as we were saying right like once you get an, uh, an order you basically actually have to go and enter this order into the point of sale system so that the staff can actually uh, make the order so given the fact that the or you someone actually has to enter it manually um, that might actually lead to some mistakes and all those kind of things and maybe if any additional notes that actually people um, send you they might not actually be in in um, it might not be the, the order information like for example if someone orders extra cheese that might not get translated into your order wherein the customers would say that hey, I, I paid for this extra cheese and still i'm not getting it so um in terms of the the unit cost or the unit profit which you're going to get from these third party services also have started decreasing over time um in terms of uh, these again we have talked about there are many companies which are competing each of them are actually offering their own um, incentives and which in turn have actually have decreased the number of uh, revenues also um, so some of the things that you actually have to make sure that when you're choosing um, obviously we actually have DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats and all this kind of things but you need to make sure when you're entering any kind of service or any um, any kind of uh, this one you need to make sure that you have a proper not to get into a contract uh, make sure um, 
and we have actually seen this also happen with our most of our clients what they have actually done is this is also kind of a customer um, satisfaction issue uh, for example recently i've been to san francisco where i tried to use doordash um, and then what i've seen is the per unit cost of the order that i was actually placing was significantly higher than what i would have actually um, uh, charged if i was placing directly from the customer and there are two things two aspects to this one one is the pricing itself on these third party uh, uh, third party services are higher and moreover they actually charge extra in terms of service fee in terms of uh, automatic tip and all those kind of things and obviously some of them are oblivious to all these things customers and but when they see that this happen uh, then they would actually have uh, a resentment brewing up against these companies it's resonant with these restaurants as well so it's obviously it's 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 a fine balance that restaurant owners actually have to play whether get charged 25 to 40 percent more from these delivery companies or charge an extra premium from the customers if they want to actually have delivery services and all those kind of things right um again we were talking about these company as in the, the, the tight margins that are actually impacting rising food costs rising employee costs increased competition and moreover the squeeze uh, done by these uh, third party delivery systems in our personal opinion there there is there will be a shift and there is already some kind of shift happening in terms of the restaurant owners basically pushing these uh, third party companies to lower the commissions charged and ultimately maybe the customer might actually have to pay and for example we have seen um, some companies coming up with a subscription model like DoorDash and Uber Eats at least DoorDash actually have come up with this option even Grubhub where you pay ten dollars and have unlimited number of orders uh, without getting charged for the delivery fee and all those kind of things now obviously this would actually kind of lock in some customers uh, it's kind of building brand loyalty with those if they are paying ten dollars a month but the particular third party delivery systems right another feature which we have actually seen which are happening are, are, are called the virtual kitchens or ghost restaurants uh, what we have actually seen is off late um, uh, where um where people actually can um start like um, you would actually have a virtual restaurant like in the sense that you would have it's a community kitchen where um companies have uh, started this you would actually have four or five concepts within the same restaurant there's no dining but people are actually placing an order and it's only a delivery um to go kind of a restaurant which is actually happens and obviously you actually have to manage the restaurant and the the companies like for example the uber eats or anyone will basically manage this and it's an ongoing trend uh, which we have actually have seen the concept of virtual kitchen has been there for long in terms of, for example, pizzeria, pizza places where most of it is either a pickup or delivery, but those are only single unit uh, restaurants, like most of them are pizza places, but off late, this is a community kitchen where a third party will basically set up this and four or five brands would operate from it. There's, there would not be any... Um, uh, friend facing or customer facing people to come and uh, sit and actually have uh, dinner and all those kind of things again bear in mind the the experience here is for a customer has been um, it's not basically a sit-in or kind of trying to place an, a, a, a premium on the ambience or anything like that but it's more uh, for those customers who are trying to get a quick bite or trying to basically enjoy food while sitting in the comforts of their home and all those kind of things, right? Um, we, again, we have talked about how the squeeze is happening both from, again, the squeeze is actually happening on both sides. One, on the, on the third party delivery system or companies because there is no differentiation in the sense that Grubhub, Uber Eats or anyone, they are the same in the sense that your supply is coming from multiple restaurants, 
for me as an end customer i can go to uber eats or i can go to grabhub or i can go to doordash it does not make any difference for me as an end customer and also squeeze is happening on the restaurant uh, owners because they actually have to pay um, the high percentage costs in terms of the uh, the delivery services and they actually have to have these uh, customer issues and all those kind of things and we believe that in future there would be a mix in between where uh, the delivery companies would actually have maybe an exclusive contracts or something like that so that they can actually share some customer data and all those kind of things right um, again we were just talking about the customer data because I, as a restaurant owner, would not actually have any uh, custom access to customer data <clears throat> uh, and all those kind of things, right? Um, again, we've been talking about uh, the restaurants. We want to focus on the customer data, given that um, we do not... Um, for us uh, as a restaurant marketing company, we uh, we um, we put a premium on customer data. If you actually have access to customer data in the long run for you as a restaurant owner, you can actually use it to better serve your customer in terms of understanding their preferences, your ability to communicate with them, any specials, any coupons. And at the same time, um, which would in turn will lead to um, higher revenues and increased profitability because uh, you do not actually have to go out in the market and constantly uh, try to find new customers because if you already have a set of customer database that you can actually target and that you can actually invite them over. Um, so we, we firmly believe that the customer data would be a very valuable asset and that's what we've been working on for a long time. And we've actually seen um we have seen actually what customer data can do and obviously if you look at these third party components or third party delivery systems um they actually have they are aggregators of customer data at a massive scale so across multiple restaurants so that they can actually um use this data to kind of position um different deals different coupons and all those kind of things depending upon the custom preferences and in turn will generate more revenue and all those kind of things as well but obviously they are also have they are spending a lot of money to acquire this customer data at the same time and given that lack of loyalty to these brands because for me if i'm uh, searching for a pizza i as an again as i said if I'm a brand loyal for a New York pizza area, I'll go to NewYorkPizzeria.com um, rather than going to Uber Eats or going to Grubhub. But if I'm in, in, a, in a mood for a pizza, I can go to one of these two uh, third-party uh, services and place an order. Right? Um, again, these are some statistics that actually have we have come across where they said that third party will definitely impact uh, um, the uh, the relationship between a restaurant and this one. Um, given that we, as as I was saying, right, like most of the customers who actually go to Grubhub, they are actually trying to place an order for a pizza or for Chinese or for Mexican. They are not going to go to place an order for your neighborhood restaurant or something like that. Uh, and that's what it is basically um, your restaurant is one of the menus that are actually listed there so that means you are vulnerable to competition and those kind of things right um, and and again um, we have actually seen where third party components reach out to our clients and say that hey well, okay um, we're going to actually place your order at the top or something like that again it depends because end of the day the third party um, uh, apps are trying to generate more revenue and um, if if an, a restaurant is doing well or if they're getting more number of orders they would actually place that restaurant at the top or if a restaurant is giving more uh, order uh, if the restaurant is giving more discounts or offering higher percentage then that particular restaurant will go up the top of the chain and all those kind of things right so this in turn is it, it, it sometimes where for example you might get five dollars off 
for placing an order on Uber Eats. So for me, it's better for me to place on Uber Eats than going to the restaurant chain or restaurant mybeatsarea.com and all those kind of things. So um, obviously here we've been talking a lot of um, Make a lot of uh, cons in terms of the kind of competition in kind in terms of the higher cost um, because that's what we have actually have been seeing. It's more like a Groupon effect when Groupon actually have come when they have actually launched. Everyone actually started uh, like reaching out to them and then basically started listing out. But over time, they've actually seen that people who are actually placing Groupon, they're not coming back and it's a high cost and all those kind of things. And that's what it had become a fad. And and, and in case of the third party delivery systems also, we, we are not gonna say that it, it will become a fad, but the higher cost and the lack of, uh, comp lack of differentiation, higher cost board in terms of the third party delivery system companies as well as um, higher cost in terms of the restaurants, we see a churn happening right now and it will actually happen and the sh there would be some fundamental shift in terms of how the third party uh, uh, systems will actually operate again if you look at it there are a lot of restaurants which you are listed you are one among the few of there and there is no uh, for you you cannot basically change as in like you cannot focus saying that okay, I'm, 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 I'm known for this particular cuisine or something like that, right? Um, and it, it, your visibility is dependent on a whole, whole lot of factors which you cannot govern. Um, these are some of the companies that obviously we've been talking about DoorDash, Grubhub and all those kind of things. Um, Postmates and Caviar and Uber Eats and these are the major ones. And Again, we're not going to get into the ch ch the commission rates. They actually change between uh, from one uh, one um, one restaurant to another restaurant, depending upon your negotiating factors, depending upon who the salesperson is, num volumes, and all those kind of things. And we have actually seen off late. DoorDash is actually initially it used to be Grubhub, but now DoorDash is is kind of competing with a lot of money basically backing the venture a lot of uh, pri uh, private money basically pumping into this a uh, lot of uh, basically obviously um, the second one is uber eats and and also given that uh, grubhub is listed and they also have to post a lot of uh, quarterly revenues in terms of increased profits and all those kind of things and getting as we were saying right there's not much of a differentiation when it comes to third party services um, grubhub is actually feeling a whole lot of uh, fact uh, heat in terms of this one again the app popularity depending upon whom you ask um, it depends like doordash is number one and all those kind of things uber eats again depending upon your uh, who you ask um, uber eats is mostly um, uh, pretty good with millennials because you would each can deliver late night and all those kind of depending upon the restaurants and all those kind of things as well um, right um, again there are delivery fees charged by food delivery apps depending upon how you do this one uh, depending again we have seen different uh, these are the charges which are charged for for to the end customer right um, so in terms of once Again, obviously, we, we need to make sure we, we've been talking about the operational aspects in terms of the delivery services, but we want to make sure that whenever you're signing up, make sure that you actually have a process in mind. You actually have a menu, like you might want not want to have, again, make sure that if there are any items which are not good for delivery or which will not actually uh, sit well, like if you think that, um, yeah, a cuisine or, or a particular dish actually has to be eaten within in the restaurant itself do not uh, actually have it listed on on the this one as well right and definitely you need to make sure that um, um, you need to make sure that whenever you are packing and all those kind of things it has to be presentable again just bear in mind uh, whenever someone is placing an order it would take an hour, hour and a half for them to get the food so that means 
um, the packing has to be good. It has to be maybe and the food should not get soggy and all those kind of things. And and also you need to actually have a right person or right poor people basically to be sitting at the restaurant taking the orders and all those kind of things. And and also whenever people are coming in, do not make sure that your if 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 it is if, for example if it's a sit-in restaurant, you don't want too many people uh, walking around the counter to pick up the orders. And if it is like a fast casual, you don't want too many people hanging out at the counter, whereas it will actually impact the people who want to come in and place an order and all those kind of things. So that means you need to make sure that there is a defined process for you whenever you sign up for the third party delivery systems. You need to think of menu. You need to think of how you would actually package it. Who will be the person to handle these things? Making sure that you actually know uh, how many orders you are getting, whether the money is getting deposited into the account, and all those kind of things. There are a lot of factors. Again, back end factors. I have, for example, one of our clients say that they spend at least one to two hours just to tally every week. Uh, just to tally how many orders they have got, what are the deposits, whether the deposits are being made accurately or not. And that itself is a challenge in the sense that like just imagine in terms of how many orders I'm getting, how many, whether the money which basically be, being deposited is worth it or not and all those kind of things, right? Um, so, uh, so again, as we said that, it's not just the delivery that you need to prep, but at the same time, you need to make sure that as an end customer, um, the, the difference that when someone is actually uh, uh, placing an order when um, uh, directly and we say third party, it differs. The cost basically differs, right? So uh, that actually has to make sure that uh, um, uh, we need to make sure that it is uh, they are aware of this fact also right um again we were talking about the uh, the delivery right so you need to make sure that someone a dedicated staff at least not a dedicated staff but one person has to make sure that if they send third party deliveries they have to enter the data into the point of sale system. They are supposed to manage the orders, who comes in, who picks up, what time, and all those kind of things. And at the same time, if there's any issues, uh, will this person be the one who will be calling Grubhub or or someone to basically let them know that there's an issue? And how would you resolve the customer issue if uh, a customer places an order and they got the wrong order? Um, how will you be billed and all those kind of things, right? Uh, so making sure that you actually uh, have the right staff, right? Um, so again, we actually talked about a lot of issues in terms of the third party delivery systems in, in terms of the cost wise, in terms of the process wise and all those kind of things. But at the same time, we feel that at this juncture, it's a necessary evil um, in the sense that like given that more and more customers are going towards the delivery option um, But at the same time you need to actually have a good mechanism in terms of uh, making sure that you have a good process and as much as possible try to include some kind of marketing message make sure that you have a sticker or a coupon or a feedback mechanism or a combination of all of these things um, wherein you would actually have um, that that would be included for every order and at the same time also try to see if we can actually work with these uh, third party deliveries as companies uh, we have actually have known few uh so obviously it depends on your scale and all those kind of things if you can actually work with them and try to get more out of these third-party delivery systems in terms of trying to promote a specific um, item or an offer or a coupon and all those kind of things and and again bear in mind these third-party um, companies are also trying to um, increase their brand, increase their revenues, and they would love to basically work with you as a restaurant owner to see if you proactively can come up with some offers or some kind of uh, deals or some fast moving items that you would think um, is suitable for delivery options and all those kind of things, right? Um, so just to um, kind of summarize, um, third party deliveries 
companies are good from a uh, um, awareness creation perspective from a uh, uh, customer acquisition perspective but you are also you need to make sure that you are ready for the third party delivery systems in terms of having the right set of uh, processes people um, and 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 also follow up support mechanisms that you have to put in place and make sure that you actually have uh, a marketing in the sense that when you are using this think of it as a marketing channel for you to get more business and how you're going to actually uh, use this channel for you to build relationships in terms of with these customers again the customers are who are coming in are transaction oriented they are not your customers they are customers of the third party uh, company so your endeavor has to be around trying to increase uh, increase the number of uh, customers as in like increase the engagement level with these customers and maybe trying to uh, ask them to come to your brand directly then going uh, to those uh, third party uh, systems and all those kind of things all right so that actually wraps up and if you have any questions about and connect or if you would like to see what we as a company can do or if you have any questions about a to a you can send us an email um, contacting us for a demo or if you have questions about our 4Q platform, you can send us an email at marketing at mconnect.com and we'll be more than happy to kind of uh, 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 work with you and answer any questions you might actually have. All right, so that's actually wraps up our uh, the, the monthly webinar for this uh, month. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach us to us and, and then we can actually go from there. All right. Um, so we'll we'll hold on for a couple more minutes. If you have any questions, um, uh, we can chat here, or um, again, um, or you can also send an email at marketing at mconnect.com, and we'll look forward to hearing back from you. And next month, we'll also have uh, uh, another webinar in the month of August, which we're going to actually publish shortly. Uh, you can also go to mconnect.com uh, slash webinar and register and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Thanks, everyone.